My name is Brandon Savage. I'll be your moderator for our sessions over the next three days. Uh, I am the multifamily track chair, part of AE Ventures. We're so excited to have you here. Let me introduce my background, tell you a little bit about myself, and then some housekeeping things, and then I want to introduce our sponsor for the event today. So I have worked for AE Ventures for a couple years now for these summits, but it's not the only thing I do. I live in Manhattan, Kansas, and I teach at the business school at Kansas State University. I teach operations and supply chain. I've been doing that for five years. The first two decades of my career, I spent in industry, a lot of it in the home security industry. Um, as smart home technology started evolving, I had a front seat to that happening, worked at a, a small little company that uh, called Vivint um, that really was kind of pioneering some of the smart home stuff in 2010, 2011. I was helping ordering the, the video cameras and the smart locks and, and saw how that, that really transformed an industry. And, um, I love technology. One of the other hats that I wear is I am the head of solution enablement for a software company called Vozic. And we can chat about this another time, but it's artificial intelligence and machine learning to help reduce customer churn for recurring revenue consumer facing businesses. Um, Probably not something most of you are interested in, but I, but I enjoy that. I graduated, um, got, I did my master's in business from the Wharton School of Business, did a dual major in strategic management and operations and information management. And, and I love technology, I love operations, but I am not an expert in a lot of things we're gonna be talking about the next two or three days. I think why John asked me to, to sit in this role is I'm a good talker and I ask good questions and I'm curious and we're gonna get a lot of experts up in front of you over the next two days that are going to share their expertise with you. One of the things we, we, we share about this Builder Summit is that what we try not to be is a mirror. We don't want to just reflect back to you the things you already know. What we like to position ourselves as is a catalyst as that we want to get you interacting with other people. It could be some of the people at the table you're meeting with right now. It could be some of the sponsors that you'll interact with over the next 48 hours. But that through these interactions, it will spark new ideas, new concepts, new technology, and hopefully transform your companies and the way that you do business. So this edition of the Tech Home Builder Summit unites a group of 140 innovative builders, including this track, the high volume track, and the luxury track, alongside a diverse mix of 100 different sponsors. So over the next 48 hours, we encourage you to make meaningful connections, as you've already started to do today, to help you make technology a strategic asset for your companies. The sponsoring companies that you'll see and interact with over the next 48 hours represent a wide variety of innovative products, including smart appliances, property management solutions, tankless water heaters, wiring enclosures, LED lighting, electrical devices, HVAC systems, Wi-Fi solutions. What I'd like to do now is I'd like to introduce our sponsor for today's session which is Cox Communities. And so I'm gonna introduce John Gray, who's a national account manager from Cox Communities to come on up and introduce himself and tell you a little bit about their company and what they can help you with over the next 48 hours. Thank you, Brandon. Um, my name is John, like he said, I'm with Cox Communities. We are very happy to be here and we're proud to be a sponsor. So thank you once again to everybody for being here. Uh, we're excited to be here sharing this experience with you. Um, I had a presentation of about 45 slides, so I guess you guys wouldn't mind if I did that, would you? I promise to have you out of here in a little less than an hour. Um, you know I'm kidding, right? So uh, we're going to be talking to you folks uh, about Cox Communities. Uh, I don't know if anybody has seen the recent news, but Cox was just ranked by Ookla as the fastest internet download for fixed broadband providers. And, and we just barely took that away from uh, Verizon who had had that title for over two years. So we're pretty happy and ecstatic about that. Um, so we plan on keeping it and that's our goal is to be the fastest provider in the United States. So 
over the next 48 hours, like Brandon had uh, talked to you about, we're going to be talking to you about smart apartment technology. We're going to be talking to you about our Quick Connect program for our single family uh, unit uh, space. And we're looking forward to meeting with everybody that has uh, signed up. We want you to stop by the booth. Um, thank you for being here, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. All right, so today, this session is a little bit different from the rest. This is what we call a round table, and you're gonna have the opportunity to interact with the other people at your table, and we're going to brainstorm on some particular ideas. For those that have come in a little bit late, we're gonna encourage you to come into one of these first eight tables here um, now, if you can, or at least in a little bit when we start doing some of this brainstorming. But today's session is about health and wellness. So what is wellness? The Global Wellness Institute defines it as the active pursuit of activities, choices, and lifestyles that lead to a state of holistic health. In a little bit here, I'm going to show you what we call the wellness wheel of all the different things that wellness encompasses. And what I want to do for the next 10 minutes or so is to share some ideas and concepts about wellness that are certainly trending right now. And then I'm going to turn the time over to you within your tables to take a section of this wellness wheel and to talk about what are some things that you're doing as a company today in some of those areas and what do you think your customers want in the future and what are some features you think you can offer in the future that will move your business. So as I'm starting to share some ideas now, I want to at least plant that seed of what we're going to do in the kind of the second half of our activities today. So, as I mentioned, I teach at Kansas State University, and it certainly has been interesting over the last, um, the last two years. One of the things when we talk about wellness that certainly is on top of mind for, for me in my life, and I think for uh, at least a segment of all um, consumers at this point as we come out of the pandemic, is air quality, right? Um, we, we shut down for a whole semester during COVID, and did everything online and taught online. And as we started coming back in, first it was we could have half of our students in the classroom. And we kind of rotated through opportunities and mixed in Zoom with that. Then after a semester or two, we were able to have all the students be in the classroom, but still wearing masks. And then eventually the masks came off. Um, over this last semester, is really the first time as I was trying to decide where I wanted to find my own personal level of comfort um, in terms of the exposure that I would get sitting in the classroom with uh, usually 45 college students that aren't necessarily known for trying to be careful when it comes to COVID, right? And so I picked up at one point, what I imagine some of you have seen before, is this little uh, Aeronet 4 carbon monoxide or carbon dioxide detector. So my understanding is that this is a bit of a proxy to be able to understand the amount of ventilation in a room and that as there's poor ventilation, the levels of carbon monoxide will continue to, to build up. And I wanted to see in the various places that I go throughout the week, including the classrooms I teach in, my office in the business building, um, church on Sunday, my house, where these levels are. Um, it certainly has been interesting. So here is the the chart over the last seven days. And I'm just gonna walk you through some of the, the different peaks that you see on here. Um, I don't have a, a, a laser pointer, but we'll start with Monday. What is that? Actually, I can't see myself. Okay, so we have Wednesday as the first one there. I teach on Wednesdays and Fridays, and so those two little bumps you see there are when I'm in a classroom. I have a class from 11.30 to 12.30. That classroom, at least on Wednesday, started off high and then started coming back down. But then I went to a different classroom and I teach back-to-back -back classes from 1.30 to 2.30. Um, stayed kind of high. Thursday, I was in my office most of the day. You can see the ventilation in my office is pretty good. And when I bring my sensor home, the house has been pretty good, primarily because the weather's been really good in Manhattan, Kansas. And we've actually been keeping our windows open this week, which means we get a lot of circulation. As soon as those windows are closed, though, the levels start going up at least in our house. Friday, you see the same thing. And for whatever reason, that first classroom that I went to, this is where you see the first peak in red, um, 
Doors were closed, same as usual, but uh, that day um, it peaked pretty high. Then a little bit later, went into the other classroom. It got a little bit into the yellow. You can see when I went back home. Sunday was good. I was at home all day Sunday um, until the afternoon. Um, and, and all my kids and family were in my bedroom um, in the evening for a couple hours as we were watching movies. And you can kind of see the carbon monoxide kind of creep up uh, Sunday night. Monday is interesting. I did teach again on Monday. So you can see the big peak in that first classroom. And then you can see my second classroom. And then you see me getting on the planes. So I had a layover in Dallas. Those was the first, well, the, the, the very last peak was the plane from Dallas to Phoenix. You can see that the circulation on the plane was not very good. And the peak before that was the small little jump flight from Manhattan to Dallas. So it's interesting to see. And I imagine that more and more people are going to be conscious of um, these type of metrics, and I know some of you are already conscious of them as you're looking. Now, what I think is fascinating is that you can see, as soon as I got to the hotel room last night, that sucker dropped right down to 500 and was pretty much 500 the whole time I was in the hotel room. And even right now, here in this facility, we're sitting at 495, which is a really good, good circulation. So no surprise. So just an example of one of many aspects of wellness that are going to be creeping more into the, the level of consciousness for our consumers. So why is this important? The wellness real estate industry is expected to, to total $134 billion in the coming years, including um, a focus on wellness architecture, wellness design, and biophilic design. Now, I'm going to admit that was a word I hadn't heard of before. How many of you are familiar with what biophilic design is? Okay, good. I'm not the only one. There's a few of you that are good. Good for you that know. For the rest of us, you're like, what the heck is that, right? Um, so, biophilic design. Here's a, a little bit of a background on that. Another example of wellness. Biophilic design is increasing occupant connectivity to the natural environment through the use of direct nature, indirect nature, space and place. You see an example here of a, a biophilic studio that you can see incorporating nature into um, the living space. What we see with wellness and a lot of the focus on these areas of the wellness wheel I'm going to share with you is that in the single family market, that focus on wellness and a lot of the features that center around wellness are helping boost the price for houses that sell. Now, we may not have seen as much adoption within the multifamily industry yet, but we know it's coming, and we can certainly see some of the high-end properties are starting to incorporate many of the same wellness architecture, design, and features that we see in high-end single-family housing. So for biophilic design, for example, ways that you can bring nature into the, the architecture and design of multifamily, and there are certainly some projects both in the United States and internationally that are really doubling down on this, as I see an example here. Focus on environmental features, natural shapes and forms, looking for natural patterns, um, you know, I, I think even some of the design and architecture of this relatively new convention center that's been refreshed um, definitely features some of the, instead of the square, we get the feeling of being under a, a canopy of trees, both in here and outside. Uh, focus on light and space, bringing more light, light into the building. Um, focus on place-based relationships, helping people feel like they're connecting with where they are. Um, and then evolving that, that kind of human nature relationship. So here's an example of, of seven ingredients for healthy home design that go beyond biophilic. Things that we'll likely talk about here in a moment as you're brainstorming your tables. Having a tight building envelope, um, mechanical ventilation. And I, I just realized when I was doing my introduction, there was one last logo that I forgot to talk about. Um, for the last two years, I've served on the the board of the, our local affiliate of Habitat for Humanity, and currently am serving as chair of the affiliate. And our latest build in our community um, recently won the National Innovative Design Award, and it's a small, single-family house. Um, it is well below the average price of housing in our area. 
Um, it's small, I think it's about 1,200 square feet, but we focused on some of the things you see are particularly the tight building envelope. We have solar panels, um, innovative heat pump, heat pump um, design that really keeps the, the kind of the net zero promise when it comes to utilities. Those type of features usually you see in the high end design. Um, our particular affiliate and our executive director and construction manager partnered with a lot of different organizations in our community to try to bring some of this high-end technology into the lower markets because they wanted to prove that it's possible, and it was. Uh, other items here, mechanical ventilation, air filtration, properly sealed duct openings, optimal natural light, um, trying to keep the, the level of VOCs, volatile organic compounds, low when you're talking about um, different adhesives you're using throughout the home, the carpet pads, other things that tend to have high VOC content, and also looking for VOC-free paints. Other examples of, of wellness design, um, focusing primarily on biophilic in these pictures. So now I'm gonna reveal this wellness wheel and start giving you your assignments. So what we see here on the wellness wheel is three different sections. The green, the blue, and the yellow. The green represents psychological components of the wellness wheel. Blue represents environmental. Yellow represents physical. So for psychological, we have mindfulness, family and social experiences, nature experiences, spiritual experiences. In environmental, we have air, which we talked a little bit about today, water, light, sound, and in the physical section, security and safety, one that I'm familiar with from my career, sleep, food and nutrition, and fitness. So with this foundation, here's what our round table is going to be today. At the front of your tables on the ground, you're gonna find an easel. Can you go ahead and grab that one that's at your table and just hold it up so everyone can, can see it? At least for the first six tables, I've, I've assigned your category. So this particular table is going to focus on the psychological elements, the four green circles, and I'll leave this up on the board, so the, on the screen, so that you can see it. These two over here were blank because I wasn't sure how full, full we were going to be, so we were gonna decide afterwards what we're, what we're going to assign you, so we'll do that right now. Let's go ahead and have that far table, if you'll be environmental, and this closer table, if you will be physical. And then what I'd like to ask is for a table over here, if the two of you could join this front corner table so we can kind of fill that table out. So what we're gonna do for about, I think, 20 minutes is at your table, I want you to look at the four areas that belong to your segment and answer three questions and start filling that out on this paper. And if you need to go to other papers on there, you certainly can. The questions that I want you to answer are threefold. First, what do you at that table currently offer today that fits within the wellness edict for your section? So kind of say, here's, here's the things we are doing. Second, what are you hearing from your clients? What are they saying they want that you don't have currently? And then the last one kind of ties into the second one is what features can you add or expand in the wellness category to drive more business. So this is an opportunity to be a catalyst, to share ideas amongst each other at the table, brainstorm, talk about things you want to do or that you, you wish you could do. And then the fun part at the end of the 20 minutes is you need to have a representative from your table who's gonna come up here to the podium and give a three minute walkthrough of the things that you answered. And we're gonna do that for each of the tables. So I'm gonna do the best to kind of manage our time our goal was to be done by 3.55, and then we've got a few housekeeping items before we let you go at four to your next component for today. Um, but for now, we'll, we'll start the 20 minute clock, we'll turn on some light music um, as you can start brainstorming together at the table. Any questions? Everyone understand what you, what you need to do? Can everyone read what's on there? Especially the back table here, you, you can see the assignment okay? Hopefully make it, okay. All right, we'll turn it over to you. All right, time's up. So what we'd like to do, we'll see how this works, 
If you can designate someone who is your presenter, your spokesperson from your group, um, to be fair, maybe it shouldn't be the person who was also the scribe, but we'll let you decide. Um, they're going to come up, we'll set the, the easel here on the table, and they can kind of walk through what, what you learned. So let's start with, with is one of the, the physical groups want to volunteer to go first? I think there was three tables that did physical. Okay, back here, they were the first one. You'll get a chance to, but go ahead, spokesperson, come on up. I'm Matthew, I'm from Dallas. Happy to be here. Um, so the first thing, the first component was, well, what are we doing now? So kind of the checkbox of what everybody else is doing. Fitness centers, we're also doing bike paths. Um, somebody also mentioned the virtual fitness apps. So, you know, what uh, beats, whatever classes that we're doing. Um, you know, Pelotons, all that stuff. Um, then the second component was, what are we hearing in the market that we're not currently doing? Um, healthy vending. That's something that I've seen before. If you've heard of Farmer's Fridge or Garden Cup is another company that's out there. Um, basically where you have a, a fresh vending machine that you can put in your fitness center, you can put it in your, your uh, amenity center. It's a great way for people to have, you know, that have access to that facility to be able to come in and get something really uh, that's meal prepped, fresh, ready to go. Um, I've heard that there's a lot of success there, profit sharing opportunity. Um, also, you know, climates like this, so what, you know, uh, West Coast, outdoor fitness centers or out, just outdoor fitness equipment in general. Uh, that's a big one that I've seen, indoor outdoor fitness center, um, where you can roll up a garage door and you can have an indoor outdoor component that's really cool um, if you have a good climate. And then um, also we, when we talk about uh, uh, hard key security and things of that nature and safety, being able to have remote app access. So if you forget your keys, forget your key fob, being able to use your phone, be able to get into the facility, the gym, um, you know, or more importantly, your unit. So that's something that we know people are doing that we'd like to incorporate ourselves. And then kind of the last thing that, you know, might drive uh, better business was the C component that we put here, which was to improve indoor, uh, indoor air quality. I mean, obviously that's a big one now, um, you know, but an ERV system is relatively inexpensive when you consider the benefits on the MVP side, especially when you're combating um, humidity. So that's something that we like to fight. So anyways, that was our rundown. So there we go. Um, no, you can take back to the table, thanks. All right, let's have a volunteer from our environmental section. Okay, a quick first hand I saw here. Come on up. Why don't you set that in the same spot there? Thank you. There you go. I feel like I'm back at the science fair. <laughs> Um, all right, so I doubt any of you guys can read this, and I'm going to try to read my own handwriting here, but um, we obviously had environmental and brainstormed a bit at our table what we have, what customers want, and then what we could do a little bit better. Um, what we have today in the air category, um, we talked about some interesting HVAC um, systems in our high-rise units that allow uh, air to circulate in when we don't have the most operable window options. Um, also, some air purification. I think we're really kind of at the base level for this at most of our communities. Um, and then for water, um, building water softeners is, is something that we're seeing a bit of that's happening today. Um, light, not necessarily something that um, ascent, uh, impacts the person or the resident, but LED lighting, it certainly impacts the environment. Um, so we wrote that down. And then sound, we have some water features in our buildings, which, you know, relates to that biophilic design. So that sense of hearing water running, that's, that kind of relates to that, that biophilic design that you mentioned earlier. What do customers want? They want operable windows. That's something I think that's key to them, you know, and not as educated as some people in this room might be about filtration and Certainly not you, Brandon, <laughs> um, but, but certainly having those operable windows. Water, additional filtration in showers and sinks, and we'll get into a little bit about how we can do better um, with that. Light, 
blackout shades. That's something they ask for all the time just to improve that sleep. You know, I don't know if any of you have the aura ring in here, but we're all starting to get a lot smarter about our sleep patterns and our residents are as well. Um, and then finally here, sound. So sound mitigation between units is something that's really important to our residents. If you read online reviews, it's probably the number one thing that you read about. So especially today when residents are spending a lot more time at home than they have in years past, that sound mitigation isn't just important at night as they're sleeping, but it's as they're working and going throughout their day. Um, what can we do better? Air filtration. So in the air category, there's, you know, triple step air purification. There's ways to measure and present the data to our residents. So that's always such an important part of the um, endeavors and efforts that we're working on is not just that we're doing it, but that we're presenting it to a resident in a way that's marketable, that means something to them, and that's, you know, driving a return on the investment that we've made. Um, H2O filters in unit. So we talked about, uh, um, I have a filter on my shower and my bathroom um, and my kitchen. So there are certain filtration systems that will look at the area in which you live in and, and create the filter based on that. So being really mindful about what we're offering in unit and not just as a, as a larger community. Um, light, smart lighting, so a big focus on circadian, our circadian rhythm and how we're using smart lighting and even shades like Lutron shades um, to set wake up settings and that sort of thing to help with our, our health and wellness from a lighting perspective. There's a lot of studies out there about if you wake up in the morning and you um, take a walk when the sun is rising, you're apparently a better person. So we could all do a little bit of that. Um, and then sounds, uh, I mentioned water features, you know, built-in Bluetooth in units so that we can do some of those wake-up settings with our smart homes. And then finally, we even talked about what is the sound um, music-wise that we're playing throughout our building um, in the morning versus the afternoon versus the night. How can we start to kind of mirror um, a resident sentiment or uh, attitude at that time of day? Um, Thank you. All right, well, thanks, Brandon, for giving me what I feel is the most difficult one. It was uh, in the bunch. Uh, so, so it was a challenge for us. I'll start with that. Uh, really, from a uh, psychological perspective, really what we could really think of is uh, common areas. You know, what, what we do in the common areas. Uh, and so we have, okay. Uh, so we have, you know, the like bringing in nature trails to the common areas, water features, uh, different, uh, uh, you know, kind of calming uh, places to go and sit. It doesn't have to be the pool to where you've got a bunch of people walking around, splashing around, swimming in the pool. It could just be, hey, there's a quiet little courtyard. You can go over there and relax. Um, and then I think social was one of those too family social experience. Uh, so that would be like your barbecue areas, uh, the pool, uh, all of those areas that, that we do today where people can go socialize. And I think, you know, depending on the community, you'll bring that uh, social aspect into uh, the area a lot more than, than others. Uh, the spiritual aspect, so we do a lot of yoga studios. I think most people do. Uh, and then we're, we're kind of blending, we're trending more into like actual spa settings. So uh, doing some saunas, doing some, uh, you know, more in depth, uh, just bringing in uh, masseuse if you want to do uh, schedule massage and, and kind of those concierge type services. Mindfulness. So we uh, kind of focused on a construction aspect here from um, a mindfulness aspect is, you know, how, reducing waste, uh, uh, you know, w when you're building, being mindful of how much waste you're producing and how much waste you're sending to landfill versus recycling. Uh, let's see, what else was there? I think that was about it. 
was a challenge. <laughs> Hi, everyone. I am Linda Lonson with Napoleon Products. And my table, I think, went to your class because they all got A's, and I did not. So they sent me up here. <laughs> That's what you're getting. All right, so we had physical. And I think the most important thing that we talked about at the beginning was understanding geographical trends and how that fits to the consumer or that home um, owner, buyer. And specifically, an example would be like in Atlanta, where they were saying Midtown, they were putting in dog parks and things like that to really get people more of that feeling be getting outside. And suburbia, they were looking at more, oh, what did we say for suburbia? <laughs> Forget that one. Okay. And then as far as um, what we were seeing, some of the trends that we saw or they were doing was office spaces. So, you know, as consumers were going in, they were always looking at, for two bedrooms. Now they're saying, I need an office space, right? Everybody knows that because you're sitting with your bed in the background as you're at home virtual, right? Uh, security systems, not only just security systems to make you feel safe, so that's part of the uh, physical component, but when you think about food deliveries, Amazon lockers, uh, that's really important. Um, let's see, what else? Oh, air quality. So we said air quality hits sleep. So that's interesting, right? Of course it does. So that's a physical component that, you know, air quality seems to just kind of ruminate across everybody here. Um, I think the other thing that's really important is uh, what, are the, what are the trends or what's really important? And I thought these quotes were really good. So um, when we look at Urban Planner, one of them had mentioned that it's really important to understand that if we can get more eyes on the street, people will feel safe. So one example of that was more cafes built into your um, developments, et cetera. Let's see. And I think last but not least, what's really important too from a needs perspective is cost versus need versus perceived value. So a lot of times we think it's important, but it may not be important to that person who's buying it. And at the end of the day, that's their perceived value. So that's really important. But there were ways to build in sustainability into the physical component, such as um, like if you wanted to get more well, we talked about hub trains and rainwater and things like that. So as you're building developments and you're looking at a specific geographical area, are there ways to get that, um, that connection through really trams that are going to be there in the future, for example? So there are ways to incorporate some of these things into your building that will bring your costs even steepen, right? So cost versus need versus perceived value. That's all I got. Hey everybody, my name is Chris Garrett. I work for Grove Ventures. We're a development and management company in Raleigh, North Carolina. We had environmental, which was a little bit harder for us. Um, kind of some of the things we've already talked about that we've been focusing on is uh, higher rated filters in all of our residential and commercial asset types. So to kind of give you an idea, we took some things we saw in the pandemic and just made them standard as we kind of moved through, obviously, 2021, 2022. Included in that is infrared air cleaning. We were doing that on our commercial buildings. We are now investigating that and doing that in all of our residential. Um, we also focused on, obviously, different air circulation that we could do with patios, with um, garage doors that open into outdoor amenity spaces. We're in the southeast. We have wonderful weather year-round. In January, we have 70 degree days. So it was important to us to kind of focus on that. 98% of our units all have livable balcony space. We also focused on interior and exterior landscaping. So landscaping is very big for us. We bring plants both inside and outside for zen spaces, more air quality, all that focus. Um, in regards to water, um, some other our, our group have tankless water heaters in all of their resi units in uh, Canada, which was new to me. Had not seen that at all. We do not do that. Um, going with technology, leak sensors, uh, water detection, all that kind of great stuff, uh, national building standards, uh, LEED certifications, we're big focus on that on all of our resi products. Um, in lights, that's a little bit more we're doing. We're doing full integration for most of all of our new resis, so everything from light integration, lock integration, we are doing um, dimmers, uh, outlets, um, access control, pet features, everything is fully integrated. Um, so with that, there's a little bit of 
controlling of kind of how you want your mood to set when you come home, if you want it darker, if you want it lighter. Uh, we are doing blackout shades in all of our master bedrooms, um, in all of our new multifamily. So we've seen that is a win. People love that. It's a big, big for our, for our doctors, our nurses, individuals who work long hours. They love that. Um, we focus on the exposure of the units. We want to have a majority of units that have rising sun and setting sun exposure, if we can. We have a lot of trees around us, so it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes. Uh, we also focus on larger windows, upper and lower transoms. If we're in a wood frame building, you know, we obviously can't do full glass. If we're in a high rise, we're doing full glass. So there's a couple of things we focus on with that. Uh, soundproofing, that's a challenge. Most of our market is wood frame. We are transitioning now to more concrete construction. We just delivered a 39 story concrete construction unit, or we didn't, but our market just did. Um, that's setting the rates for the rents, and we're really seeing a demand for that sound insulation. We do focus on going two steps above with Incasonic on all of our multifamily. Um, so that is another level of integration that will help, obviously, with sound, uh, double insulated walls, uh, wall gaps, all that type of stuff to help with things that you can do. Um, higher grade windows with reflectivity and also sound as well. And then, let's see here. Um, we have retail in some of our mixed use developments, so we focus on a uh, certain number of parameters that we're building out retail space in regards to gyms. Uh, so they have to be built to a certain standard for us to allow the retail gym leases to be signed and go in our buildings. Um, things that we could do better on. Um, one thing that we're seeing is we're seeing a demand for constant integration in our market. So we have a very tech heavy market in the Triangle of North Carolina, so you have a lot of college led, Durham, Chapel Hill, Duke, all that. So we're seeing people want more, not only the integration, be able to control things, but also full concierge level integration. So it's to the point where, honestly, if they don't have to interact with the office staff, we have certain ones that still do, but some people are just wanting to move more towards just technology integration. With that is lights, everything you could think of. Um, a new one for us, probably that you guys may or may not be experiencing, all of our properties are smoke free. They're smokeless. Um, one thing we'd like to see or think about doing is integrating smoke detection. So if someone is violating that from an operator standpoint, a management standpoint, how we can then catch them and then handle them, hold them responsible for violating that. That is a big, 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 big thing that we're getting a lot of people asked for. Um, and again, just focusing on just healthy living. Um, we have a new project. We'll break ground next year. Our main focus is it to be super green. Um, it will have mixed indoor outdoor fitness. It will, we're on greenway systems, all of our projects are, so we have direct access to greenway systems. Um, so that project will focus more on green living, you know, a little bit more of the light, the sound, um, water features. We put water fountains in all of our outdoor areas to help mimic or dull any type of urban sound you may have or something like that. So I think that's everything. Cool. Thank you, thank You're you. Welcome. All right, if you didn't get a chance to share, I apologize, but we're right where we want to be, and I've got a few kind of closing, closing remarks and some housekeeping events. So I hope that this gets your mind thinking about some of the cutting edge things that maybe your peers are doing, other people at the table. For those of you that are already doing those things, you're able to share with others, and I hope that by continuing to connect with other people throughout your time here over the next 48 hours, that you'll be able to be more aware of how you can take technology, combine it with building, and to be able to create a better opportunity for your company to strategically differentiate themselves in the market. Now, I know some of you may already be feeling like, yeah, these are really great ideas, but how do we get these approved? How do we, how do we go through the financial ROI calculations for some of this stuff that may not be so black and white? And the good news is that tomorrow morning at breakfast, that's what our entire session is about, is how we can do the technical analysis, the financial analysis, to be able to show how you can benefit from investing in technology. All right, as we close this session today, I want to once again thanks, thank Cox Communities for their sponsorship of this opening presentation.